Isn't this one of the most frustrating things ever? You finally build up the desire to do some academic reading, go and have a look in the peer-reviewed literature for some new ideas to help inspire you throughout your research project. Now, you head over to something like Google Scholar, this is Google Scholar, and you say to yourself, oh, I want to know about 18% efficiency organic solar cells. Then it brings you to here and you go, oh, okay, well, this one's got a PDF, this one's got a PDF. Okay, all of these have got a PDF, but this one, the one that is exactly what I want to know about, hasn't got a PDF. Okay, well, maybe I'll click into that. And you click into it and you end up here. And you think, okay, uh, I want to read the whole thing. Where can I actually find the whole thing? And then you head here and it's Elsevier. And you go, okay, full text. I'll click there and you head there and it takes you to here and you're like, okay, I just want to read some actual research. I'm just sort of like clicking around randomly now on these blooming websites and you're like okay well I want to know how to get this how do I get the PDF and then you head over here and you think oh purchase short communication it's going to cost me 25 US dollars minus five cents like that really matters oh god damn it so that's when you definitely shouldn't use a potentially illegal source to get this such as Sci-Hub. So Sci-Hub is a very naughty way of getting papers that you should definitely shouldn't use almost daily to get around these paywalls. It's so bad that uh, you definitely shouldn't head over to the original kind of article and grab the DOI. If you grab this, oh, it's horrible. And then like, it's just so gross that you, it's so easy that you put it here and then you open it up and then just in this disgusting, illegal manner, you get access to the full paper. That is just so annoyingly illegal that I don't think you should be doing this if you find yourself in the same situation. One thing I definitely wouldn't be doing is integrating Sci-Hub into Zotero. And there's actually a way of sort of like making sure that when you upload something to Zotero, you can access the full um, document using Sci-Hub. And so I'll show you how you definitely shouldn't be doing this. If you head up to edit and then you go down to settings it will bring up this section you want to go to advanced and you scroll all the way down to the bottom to config editor if you put in config editor you'll get this proceed with caution and you should proceed with caution because you know you definitely shouldn't be using sci-hub to get free research papers so you definitely click here okay accept the risk and then here you want to type in the word resolve resolve there we are and this is what you're looking for here extensions zotero find pdf dot resolvers and then once you click on this you click on this little edit button and i've already done it for me and after that you definitely don't want to copy and paste this into this section so this is essentially telling zotero to use sci-hub to go and find a PDF that was otherwise behind a paywall. So you can see here we've got Sci-Hub method get and then this is the URL. Now one thing after this video is produced, Sci-Hub sort of like changes its URL, uh, URL, there we are, that's how you say it. It changes changes its URL regularly because it's taken down and then it sort of like rises up in another position because it's so illegal that it kept, keeps on being taken down. So what you've got to do is head over to Sci-Hub and then just look at this sort of like um, URL here. And then you want to make sure that you put that URL in the place of where it says URL. And it it's in quotations, so here you've got HTTPS and then .e, and then the important thing is you put this at the end, slash DOI. Make sure you put that because it uses the DOI to access the paper. Um, and after you've done that, you definitely shouldn't go here. Where are we? Oh, we need to go to this one, which definitely shouldn't sort of like just go out of this and then head to Zotero. And then now what you'll see is you've got this little button up here. So if you click that little button there, you can enter ISBNs or DOIs. We do have the DOI, the document object identifier. So we can put the object identifier in there if we 
need to remember what it is, we can go here, we can go copy, back to Zotero, and then we go magic, enter DOI, click here, and then we put it in, and as you can see, it will actually end up here as um, one of your references in Zotero. And the one thing you'll notice is this little PDF thing has appeared at the end. And all of mine, apart from this one actually, have got PDFs, and that's because I've integrated Sci-Hub, which is something you definitely shouldn't do to get free uh, access to these papers. And then if we go down here, we can see that the thing it actually generated is a journal pre-proof. Um, and uh, yeah, it's got this sort of like proof thing on it, just like it does on Sci-Hub. So that tells me that that link is actually working. So it's the same pre-proof it's pulled, but now you've got that kind of like ability in Zotero to get all of the references from Sci-Hub into Zotero. Brilliant. So definitely don't do that because you shouldn't because it's illegal. There's also other tools that you can use. And if you're not using these, you're probably not using it to its full potential. And that's Sci-Hub that is, which you shouldn't be using anyway. Naughty. So there's this little extension that you can put on, which is here, Sci-Hub Scholar. And if you've got Firefox, you can put it on. And what it does, you see, is it replaces the links and actually creates the link to Sci-Hub if it finds the article. And if it doesn't find the article, then it won't link to that, obviously. But you can see here, just like before, this has a PDF and it's got a DOI. This doesn't have a PDF, but now if you click here, it goes to Sci-Hub. So you can use all of these sort of like different tools to get access to papers that are otherwise behind a paywall. By using it in something like Zotero, you can make sure the full power of Sci-Hub that you shouldn't be using is available at a click of a button. And it's as easy as going in, entering your DOI and making sure that it gets it from um, Sci-Hub. So those are all of the extra things you can use to make sure Sci-Hub is working for you. And Sci-Hub is just sort of like a really great place to get information. And here we've got eight 4 million uh, papers in the Sci-Hub library. And another tool that you should know about is um, Anna's Archive. So I'm going to go here. Anna's Archive also gives you the ability to search for papers. This has got 92 million, which is more uh, papers than Sci-Hub because it's keeping up to date more often than Sci-Hub. But you can go here, put the DOI and push open and you'll get access to that same paper. So if you can't find it in something like Sci-Hub, you can also go on to uh, Anna's Archive and find it. And you can see we can record it in Anna's Archive, download Sci-Hub. There's also DOI. This is the pre-proof. So yeah, this this is another great place that if you wanted to, you could actually go in and uh, find uh, papers that are otherwise behind uh, paywalls, which is completely not allowed and you shouldn't be doing it. Stop it, you naughty person. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about Sci-Hub, the secret disruptor of academic information. I think you'll love it.